Welcome everyone to this uh, event. Uh, some of you will be watching it later on on the record. So as you understand, this is going to be a recorded video for everyone who is joining today. We have the pleasure of having some of our colleagues here with us today. We will be talking about open banking and SMEs. And uh, we are also going to see a few very good examples of how open banking can help and support uh, the SMEs around us. Uh, this is a webinar that is organized uh, on uh, the Infinitech 2020 project. Uh, we are Crowd Policy. My name is Theo Kodastavros, and uh, we will be with you for the next hour or so. Uh, so, in order just to give you a quick uh, view and understand a taste of what we're doing and working on, on the Infinitech project, I would like to share a video, a quick video with you, uh, which uh, will show you just how the project is going on and what everyone is working on this. Uh, so, I will ask my colleague. Thank you very much. It's, it's a few minutes long, and I hope you enjoy it. The financial sector is historically conservative and therefore resistant to a digital transformation. Despite the rising investments in innovation, financial institutions still face many challenges to keep up. Embracing the digital transformation is only one of the problems. The continuously evolving regulatory environment, privacy protection policies, and the emergence of new types of fraud raise barriers to change, making it hard to benefit fully from the latest technologies. But it's really hard to gather such a huge amount of data from so many fragmented sources. By leveraging and sharing their data, banks, fintechs and financial institutions could create more effective digital services and personalize them around the customer. They could prevent frauds, make services more accessible and improve their decision making. Wouldn't it be nice if there was a unified solution that helped the financial sector to gather data and really go forward with the digital transformation process? <clears throat> well, of course there is. Infinitech is already operational, resolving problems for over two years now. We provide cutting-edge big data, AI and blockchain technology for digital finance coupled with complementary assets like trainings, innovative processes, and regulatory compliance building blocks. Infinitech is a large-scale flagship project with 46 partners coming from 16 different countries. We test 16 different pilots with many more use cases, and we have a total budget of 21 million euros. Didn't you forget something? Yes, my colleague John will tell you more about the business aspect of Infinitech. Our solutions enable banks and fintechs to offer highly personalized products to their customers. For example, we use big data to create personalized asset management recommendations for retail customers. The recommendations are automated, yet explainable and trustworthy. This enables banks to offer high quality wealth management services to customers with relatively smaller portfolios and low appetite for risk. Overall, Infinitech improves the competitiveness of banks, financial institutions and fintechs while making artificial intelligence services more accessible to European citizens. This lowers the barriers for European citizens to access high quality digital management services. This sounds great, but can someone explain how it works? That would be me. AI services developed in the project enable advanced analytical capabilities such as incremental and declarative real-time analytics. Infinitech provides a seamless data management layer that allows AI to combine data coming from heterogeneous and diverse sources, having both operational and analytical datasets, allowing for integrating processes over static and streaming data. This in combination with the semantic interoperability engine of Infinitech, allow AI developers to explore a whole new path and create a new generation of services for Fintech. The microservices-based reference architecture of Infinitech enables the agile creation of workflows in a bespoke pipeline to build innovative applications, optimizing costs and reutilizing the already developed building blocks of the project. Infinitech interacts frequently with the European digital finance communities and association. For example, GFT as Infinitech coordinator, together with other partners of the consortium, created and now lead the task force Big Data and AI for the financial sector, carrying on several activities such as the publication of a white paper. 
Infinitech is recently publishing an open access book on its research and innovation activities. It has developed a marketplace to share assets and components, and as well as the so-called VDIH, providing trainings and innovation services. Keep up to date with our latest news. Subscribe to our newsletter, attend our workshop, follow us on our social media. We really appreciate your feedback. Thank you very much for that. Uh, as, as you saw, this is a very big project, so feel free to go to the, uh, to the website and uh, check it out. We have many, many things that you can uh, see, read, and uh, you can actually communicate with all the different pilots and members of the consortiums. Um, we are also very happy to help you. If you have any questions, if you need anything from us, we are here. We are open to feedback, and we are here to we are here for many many collaborations with uh, any of you that has an interest in this space. Um, so, without further ado, I would like to start with our first guest here. I have the pleasure uh, that uh, to be joined by Dimitris Petrilis, the founder and CEO of Infinite. Uh, hi, Dimitris. Good morning. Hi, Good morning. Hi. Thank All you good. very much. Uh, yeah, it's great. Thank you very much for inviting me to participate uh, in this webinar. I really appreciate it. Of uh, course, it's, it's our pleasure, actually. I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to leave it up to you. Dimitri is working on a very, very interesting project, and he's going to present uh, yeah, what he's working on with his team. Uh, so the floor is yours. Feel free to share your screen. Thank you very much. I will share my screen now. Just give me 30 seconds, please. Of course. Uh, could you please let me know if it's visible? It is. Okay, great. Excellent. So once again, it's a great pleasure being here. Um, I'm uh, Dimitris Petrilis, and I'm the CEO and founder of uh, Infinite. Uh, and uh, what we're trying to do here is the Open Banking Super App. And I will explain this, what it means, and uh, what is the impact that uh, we're trying to bring to the SME sector. Um, so just a couple of uh, words uh, about me. Um, I've uh, founded a number of companies, uh, including uh, Infinite, which is what I'm uh, working on uh, right now. Uh, I've also founded um, a Code City, which is a custom software development uh, company. And I'm a board member of Vattenvolt, which is one of the largest energy companies in Greece. And overall, I bring an experience of more than 18 years in the financial services sector, having worked both at the financial institutions and the banking vendors. So just a few weeks ago, what I did is I did a Google search. It's, uh, it's, it's already a few weeks now that I did this uh, about um, open banking. So I looked at Google on the new sector to see what's cooking essentially at open banking. And I'm uh, glad to say that uh, my view was, uh, let's say, affirmed. And uh, we see that um, most of the news focus around uh, specific areas. Okay, so for example, uh, we see a common theme around account-to-account -to -account payments and we see investment in this area from token.io and uh, Kevin. We see large uh, payment providers uh, uh, like Stripe uh, uh, launching open banking products and competing with others already in the area, such as Plaid. We see Klarna, uh, which is famous for buy now, pay later functionality, uh, starting a separate division with a separate brand name for open banking. Uh, similarly, in, you know, there was uh, uh, quite a few players now in the Greek market uh, focusing on pay, buy now, pay later, such as uh, Finloop. You also have Klarna, you also have DBI entering the market. And you see large technology companies such as Apple moving into open banking. So all this is uh, great evidence, in my view, that there is a lot of traction in the sector. Um, and if I may categorize, let's say, the trends that I see in the open banking um, area right now, first of all, it's the initial, let's say, a purpose of open banking, which was to platformize uh, banking. So we all heard uh, the examples of Airbnb and Uber, etc. So I'm not going to go into that uh, once again. But the reality of the situation is that indeed you have too many banks out there. 
and not all uh, banks offer the best product in each category. So the whole idea behind the platformication of banking is that the end user, whether that user is an individual, an SME or a corporate, they will be using the best product according to their needs uh, by each bank. And the whole idea of PhD2 is that uh, this election does not have to be domestic anymore but we can be throughout the European Union. In reality, this has not been achieved yet, but I think, and there are a lot of steps to be taken still, but I think we're in a good path towards that. Um, another area is financial management. So financial management has to do with individual and businesses managing their finances holistically. So having access to all their accounts and cards uh, in one place and having the ability to make uh, transfers also from uh, that same application. And this is one of the areas actually that Infinite uh, is uh, currently uh, providing services on. We, there's a common fee of buy now, pay later functionality. And you have, uh, I'm, I'm really happy to, to see that uh, there are both uh, very large players on this, uh, such as Klarna, but there are also, you see domestic players that are focusing uh, on, the, on the SMEs. Uh, and again, the example that I would like to bring on that is Finloop uh, here in Greece that is doing a great job supporting uh, the SME sector. Um, another area which is kind of, um, let's say, similar is the credit assessment. A lot of people are calling it credit scoring, but uh, because I have a background in the banking sector, I don't think that the terminology credit scoring is correct in this instance. Uh, however, the access to open banking data can help you assess the credit worthiness of a potential customer and accordingly either offer them a loan or a buy now, pay later functionality and so on. Additionally, account to account payments are gaining traction and account to account payments can be done for e-commerce transactions but also on physical transactions. We have a lot of uh, fintechs out there focusing on uh, facilitating uh, account-to-account payments through QR uh, scanning, for example. And also the ability to offer personalized banking services to individuals and SMEs, SMEs sorry. Uh, it's a common thing be between uh, in open banking. Uh, since by having access to the transactional data, you can provide customized products and services to your end users. And again, your end users could be individuals, SMEs, uh, or larger companies. So let's touch upon on what uh, Infinite is doing uh, on, uh, on the open banking uh, side of things. So right now we do offer account aggregation payment initiation services. So our users, uh, and again, our users are SMEs, but also individuals can access all their accounts uh, and cards in one place. Also, we offer financial management to individual and businesses uh, and automatic transaction categorization. So this means that SMEs and individuals can see how much they're spending on different uh, transaction categories, and this will help them manage uh, their finances. And right now we are developing functionalities for account to account payment and wallet to wallet payments. Um, a wallet to wallet payment is slightly different in the sense that uh, the end user uh, and uh, the merchant, they share the same wallet. So all the payments essentially are intra-bank, if, if you can call them intra-bank uh, or in, intra-EMI transactions. Um, so we kind of think that uh, what we do right now is a little bit of a commodity because uh, all this financial management and transaction categorization, etc., it's been done by a lot of players in the market. And also it is done by the banks themselves. So why do we do it? Um, we do it because we want to gather as much transactional data from individuals and businesses as possible. And why do we want to do this? Because we want to create intelligent leads for merchants based on the transactional behavior of our users. And again, our users are both individuals and uh, SMEs. So just to give you an example of this, and uh, okay, any names of insurance companies uh, that you see on this slide are indicative. Okay, they're not our, uh, they're not our um, uh, affiliates, right? It's just an example. So uh, using data mining techniques, uh, we can establish whether one of our users is paying, for example, too much money on uh, their car insurance. 
And uh, what we can do uh, on, based on this is offer them a targeted insurance plan from one of, of our affiliated in, uh, insurance companies. So we offer an intelligent lead to our affiliated insurance companies so they can come back with an insurance product that is as good as the one that the customer has, but at a better price. Obviously, there are a lot of GDPR concerns on this, and we have taken this extremely seriously. So all this happens with ex explicit consent uh, from the end user. Uh, so what are our unique selling points uh, here? So first of all, we are the only ones that we offer intelligent lead generation based on transactional uh, behavior. Uh, furthermore, we offer more cost-effective products and services for consumer and businesses. So there is a clear benefit for the end user of Infinite, not only our affiliated merchants. Uh, additionally, we're providing cashbacks uh, to consumers and SME customers for using products and services from our affiliated companies, and thus having a tangible financial benefit. And we're in the process of uh, designing and issuing a debit card for better expense management and cashback. So what are our target customers? So our target customers are financial institutions, insurance companies, utility companies, retailers, and there the focus is on the SME retailers, subscription providers, multinational merchants, and marketplaces. So essentially a very large target audience across the European Union. And just to give you some numbers on the market potential, so in the European Union, there are more than 6 million retailers, more than 7,000 insurance companies, more than 6,000 banks, more than 220 marketplaces, more than 150 telecom operators. Obviously, this cannot be all of our customers because we cannot offer intelligent leads to every single company in the European Union, but the potential is there and it is indeed uh, huge. Furthermore, the QR, um, uh, the global spend the using QR codes is expected to reach 3 trillion USD by 2025, according to Juniper Research, which is, as you can understand, a huge number. So we expect a huge growth in this area. And by the way, this is a global spend, whereas the previous numbers were within the European Union. Just uh, I mentioned this for clarity purposes. We have a very strong uh, founding team, uh, so I'm not going to go through this uh, in detail, but essentially all of the founding members of Infinite have experience in the financial services sector or in the startup ecosystem, and also have received angel investment from the founder, president, and CEO of Vattenfall, one of the largest energy companies in Greece. And our angel investor is bringing great value on this. Uh, on our offering because uh, he has huge experience on how utility companies are utilizing uh, leads uh, for attracting uh, new customers. Right now, Infinite is present in six countries. So we are present in uh, Greece, uh, Romania, Italy, Spain, Portugal, and France. Most of our customers right now have to admit come from Greece because this is the only country that we have run digital marketing campaigns on. Uh, we have more than uh, 1,100 customers. Our customers, as I mentioned, are both individuals uh, and SMEs. On the SME side, we have um, a couple of hotels. Uh, we have obviously uh, uh, Vattenvolt that is using our solution, although Vattenvolt is not an SME anymore, it's a corporate. Uh, we have uh, retail shops, uh, we have uh, online uh, e-commerce uh, businesses and so on. In terms of the banks that we support uh, for open banking, we support more than 160 banks uh, in these countries, including uh, Revolut and N26 and some of the other uh, neo banks in the region. Uh, we have received um, a lot of participation and coverage and have participated in a number of incubation programs. So right now, the most notable one is the fact that we are part of the visa innovation program. Uh, so again, we're working very closely with the crowd policy there. And already we're seeing uh, the results of our participation in this program. And um, we have uh, also participated in the, egg Euro, uh, in the egg incubation program by Eurobank. And we have received the coverage from a number of uh, media, uh, such as Antenna, which is one of the largest TV stations uh, here in Greece. And another notable uh, award that we received recently is one of the Invo Involve Award uh, Greece uh, uh, as uh, one of the most innovative uh, startup companies in the country. 
Uh, that's it uh, from my side. Uh, I mean, I'd be more than happy if uh, any of you reached out to me uh, for any advice, questions, uh, uh, anything you wish to talk about with regards to open banking and how open banking applies uh, to SMEs. Uh, I'm a person that likes to collaborate, uh, but I, I don't like secrets. I'd be happy to, to share with you any knowledge that I might have, and I'd be happy to receive any knowledge that you have to offer to me as well. So thank you very much. Thank you, Dimitris. I can uh, attest to that. He's very open. Really just reach out to him directly. He will definitely reply and help you in any way he can. Uh, we wish you all the best with uh, this. I know that uh, you have just started and you're growing very, very fast. So uh, we wish you really all the best and, you know, all these interesting things. Thank you for the nice introduction. Thank you to, for the nice presentation. There are Thank so you. many different things that you can work on. And, uh, you know, I am sure that you will succeed uh, in just bringing all these new technologies and new processes uh, to, to all these markets. Let's start by from here and, you know, the world is your canvas, as they say. Um, thank you very much, Theo. Thank you. Thank you, Dimitris. Uh, just a quick question I, I, we received. Uh, how do you connect with all these banks? Because this is, like, you know, an open banking um, uh, tool. You mentioned that you are connected with 168 banks, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, more than 160. Right now, the okay. exact number slips my mind, but uh, around that, actually. So, okay. So, uh, at some point, um, uh, a few years ago, we had to make a decision on whether we get a license ourselves as AISP and PISP and uh, do our own integrations with the banks or whether we would become agent of a licensed entity. So we chose to become agents of a licensed entity because we want to focus on our product and business rather than on the licensing part. So we are a an agent of Afterbanks, which is an entity in Spain. So they take care of uh, all the APIs with the banks. Uh, to be honest, uh, because they were not present in some of the countries that we wanted to target, uh, we had a collaboration and uh, essentially we, we pay them to develop the APIs for some of the banks. Uh, if we feel the need in the future uh, to get our own license, uh, we will do so. So, uh, But right now our focus is on customer acquisition and product development, and that's where we want to stay focused on. Yes, I understand. It makes total sense. It's, you know, you, you work on something and then you collaborate for the parts that you cannot really, you know, spend more time or uh, it's the most efficient way to go after. Thank you. Very interesting again, uh, Dimitris. Uh, please reach out to him. You can also reach out. We have many projects on the FinTech project uh, as a whole that are working on similar ideas and things. And I think there are some potential collaborations there. So let's, let's keep in touch uh, on this yes, topic as well. Thank you very much, Thank Dimitris. You. Thank you. Um, so let's move to our next uh, guest. And uh, we're also very happy here to have with us Anna, Anna Semenyuk uh, from uh, Privet Technologies. She's the one, one of our pro project partners here. Hi, Anna. Good morning. Hello, Theo. I hope so, you're well. Uh, we're very happy to have you here. The floor is yours. Feel free to share your screen. Okay, one second. Yes, of course. Are you able to see the screen now? Yes, perfect. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so welcome once again to the presentation. And here I'm happy to talk about the Pilot 4 uh, that we're developing as a part of our participation in the Infinitech project um, as a Privé, uh, Privé uh, Technologies company. So the Pilot is about personalized portfolio management and how private banking could be for everyone. But before I proceed with the pilot introduction, I would like to quickly talk about Privé solutions and what we're doing. So generally, Privé is a software house 
that provides digital um, and various solutions for a span of um, clients such as banks, insurance companies, also EAMs, um, investment firms, etc. And our sites of products uh, spans from client acquisition, also digital invoice, uh, digital onboarding and rob advisory, uh, to portfolio construction, also optimization, monitoring, reporting, and etc. Uh, and here on the slide, you see some of the examples, um, such as digital engagement that helps with client acquisition, also digital advice that helps in transforming businesses to portfolio advisory and helps to proceed with portfolio construction and also different um, analysis modules. We also have digital portfolio management that helps to um, manage portfolios on the, um, the bigger, basically the big amount of portfolios and also proceed with the balancing and order generations and for example, we also have digital operations, a module that um, helps with streamlight with stream um, streamlining different operational departments. Um, and we have different modules, as I said, and this can be named as a let's say a legal approach. Uh, and this legal block approach that we have allows clients to choose um, and assemble unique journeys by using um, modules to suit the client's uh, specific needs. And this we call uh, basically as FinTech as a service. When we are talking about the pilot four uh, that we have been developing an infinite tech project, we first wanted to, of course, address the problem that exists, that exists in the sphere. And the current problem of advising average P2C clients is that it is quite um, challenging to advise um, clients that have a smaller portfolio amounts individually. And another issue is that actually less than 30% of assets worldwide are managed professionally. And this is due to a number of reasons. Uh, for example, on the advisor side, there is a limited amount of time always of the advisor uh, to advise each individual client and provide uh, individual offering for everyone. That is why for smaller clients, um, there's basically uh, usually an offering uh, of three to 10 startup portfolios that are not tailored to their specific, specific expectations. Um, again, another challenge that it is hard to address expectations of each person if the portfolio is um, small. And on a banking side, uh, on a bank side, uh, of course, uh, such institutions all usually target uh, their profitability goals. That's why sometimes uh, due to constraints of cost and technology, they uh, stay away from the newest developments that are on the market. Uh, that's how we went uh, and came up with the solution uh, that we call individualized private banking. Like for advisory algorithm, or how we call it AI Go, the construction tool that advises uh, that allows for various options, such as, for example, uh, investment preference and selection. Also, it allows for selection and configuration of fitness factors based on the user's individual preferences. What fitness factors are, I will also address later on. Um, it also uses global financial data sources. And it's all about the development of genetic algorithm for portfolio optimization. Um, our initial draft and workflow uh, of the advisory would start with the investor onboarding, where the clients would define the risk profiling, also risk return goals, and define various preferences. Uh, then with the help of the AIGO optimizer, uh, the tool would result in, uh, would help to generate an optimized portfolio based on the client specific preferences. So um, as you see, the input is the current portfolio and various preferences, and the output is an optimized portfolio. While we proceeded uh, with the development of the tool, uh, we also um, addressed how AI Go can be used for digital and individual portfolio proposal tool. 
So the whole journey, as I mentioned earlier, would start with the risk profiling input and an input where, uh, of different client preferences or um, fitness factors. So basically the client can choose uh, his or her asset class that he wants to see in a portfolio also. Sustainability, uh, he can choose on focus topics, regions, ETFs, and a number of others. Uh, then the input that has been done by clients, uh, a go tool optimizer will use, uh, which will result in a portfolio that is tailored to each specific client's expectations. And the desired output of the journey would be then a report or a file of the proposed portfolio. So um, the innovations that we came up of the pilot, the, the, that they came up basically uh, on a business side, uh, first of all, of course, automatic risk scoring um, and personalization via various preferences selections or fitness factors. Um, this can be ESG regions, product type selection, etc. cetera. Um, and of course, also uh, the mentioned optimization that allows for flexibility in portfolio construction. This in the end, uh, also driven by risk parameters like volatility, various performance targets um, and, um, and more. On the technical side of the innovation, uh, mainly this is a newly developed tool and this is a genetic algorithm concept for portfolio construction that results in portfolio generation and analysis in more than uh, five seconds. Uh, before um, proceeding with the pilots, uh, we also, of course, conducted a market uh, research and competitor analysis. Um, on the market trend side, we, we saw that there is a highly personalized demand for um, digitized customer experience, and it is crucial uh, to address such uh, personalized um, um, of so such personalized desires of the customers to address the client needs. For example, um, there was a report by uh, McKinsey in last year that stated that by 2030, uh, more than 80% of wealth management of new wealth management clients uh, will want um, a highly personalized and data-driven um, offering when it comes to digital advice. And exactly these needs for digitization, personalization, and taking more risk appetite is the core focus um, of our development in Pilot 4. Um, when it comes also to competitors, of course, we are not the only ones in the market and, um, and other, other competitors are exploiting the AI um, portfolio construction tools and how they can be used. And we came up with um, a comparison that actually resulted in um, the fact that a pilot four has a number of benefits when it comes to, for example, risk profiling and investment preferences surveys, um, sentiment data analysis, benchmarking, and a number of others. And for example, um, personalized portfolio construction optimization, as many competitors do provide portfolios to the customers, but um, sometimes they are model portfolios, which are not uh, tailored to client specific preferences. Um, talking about the business model and the key partners here, um, of course, those would be the market data providers and also FitNex partnerships and partnerships from Infinitech project. Uh, for example, uh, we are cooperating with the uh, project partner, our uh, report brain. Uh, when it comes to key activities, um, the solutions we offer um, is again the AI-based portfolio construction uh, and various robot advisory journeys. Um, talking about the value propositions, uh, it's hyper-personalized portfolio construction tools, also uh, improvement of advisor productivity and efficiency as the portfolio generated is done by, by the AI Go tool in less than five seconds, uh, which in the end provides technological edge to, to the clients. Uh, talking about the customer uh, segments, um, our main target group are financial intermediaries, 
namely banks, um, insurance, also EAMs, insurance brokers, uh, securities and brokerage firms. Our solution um, of, the, of the tool uh, can be provided via Privé Manager's uh, wealth management platform UI, uh, UI uh, or various API feeds. And when it comes to revenue streams, um, it will be based on the subscription model, including uh, additional upfront implementation fee. So um, summarizing the pilot four and our development uh, of the pilot in an FinTech project, uh, the main objective is to construct an AI-based portfolio construction tool. Um, it starts from a set of personalized input, uh, inputs of the clients, of the clients and constraints uh, that brings the customer um, to the individually tailored portfolio that is tailored exactly to this client's um, desires and expectations. Uh, the ego capabilities, uh, first, genetic, it's a genetic algorithm concept for portfolio construction. Um, it is targeted at return risk um, as based on client's preferences. Uh, it, it is also UI and API capable. Um, talking about the main benefits about the IGO, um, again, it constructs a portfolio in seconds. Uh, it, is, uh, it provides a easy customization, both um, at advisor and client level. So it's also easily comprehensible by the clients that are not um, uh, that, that they don't have a um, great expertise uh, in field, as the risk questionnaire would be uh, quite easy to understand. Um, also, the optimizer is quite value adding, so it identifies personal risk profile, individual investment preferences, and provides automatic return uh, risk um, return risk ratio optimization. Uh, is also quite efficient uh, and provides uh, transferred multi-factor optimization. And finally, um, it is tailored. <clears throat> Sorry, Anna, we lost to, you. To uh, provide um, highly individualized portfolio. This would be actually all from my side. Uh, thank you very much for the attention. And in case you have any questions, we're happy to answer them. Thank you, Anna, so much. We lost, I think, a couple of seconds at the end, but uh, it was just uh, the conclusion, so uh, it's all right. Thank you very much for the presentation. Um, feel free to reach out to Anna for any questions. We are here. I forgot to mention that you can ask your questions on the Q&A session in the bottom of your screen. Uh, Anna is one of uh, our main uh, partners on this project, and we wish you all the best for you know going live and have the clients. I don't know. Are you going to use the beta testing version of this uh, soon? Should uh, people just contact you to to be part of that? Uh, right now, we're working on a solution of, of the UI, so mm -hmm. it's still development in progress. But once it's available, we will keep the partners uh, in informed. Perfect. Thank you so much, Anna. Once again. Uh, okay. And uh, we will come back to you if there are any questions on that. Uh, so let's move ahead with our next guest. And um, I would like to present to you Ms. Carmen Friquet from Insomnia. Uh, this is another Infintech uh, pra pra partner. Uh, she will talk about uh, investor support form and the service that we provide as a project. Hi, Carmen. It's very good to, to have you Hi. here with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. The pleasure is mine. So. Uh, yeah, I will, I'm going to share my, my screen. Okay. Just Perfect. Second, please. Okay. If you can uh, confirm me, please, if, if you can see the screen. Yes. If you want just to put it on a uh, full screen. Yeah, uh, of course. Yes. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're good to go. Of so, course. Thank you. Well, uh, hello everybody, and thank you, Theo, for your introduction. I'm Carmen Forquet. I am a project manager at Insomnia, and uh, today I'm here just to talk about the Infinity Innovation Support uh, form and other services that we are offering for business through uh, our one of the most valuable assets that we have here, which is the BDIH, that is the virtual uh, virtualized DIH. But uh, I will go further on this uh, topic a little bit later. 
Here, uh, I would like to structure my presentation. First of all, I would like to show you an introduction of how the uh, ecosystem of um, fintech and insurtech is uh, right now. After that, I will talk to you about uh, our virtualized DIH uh, or uh, an overview of the services that we are offering right now and uh, which is going to be next to. And uh, after that, I would like to uh, give a close look to the innovation support services. So uh, as Insomnia, we develop and we carry out a, a fintech an InsurTech Galaxy report in which uh, we study the different technology trends and uh, for in fintech and also InsurTech companies um, and sectors and at an European and also at an international level, taking into account not only uh, different fintechs and uh, also InsurTech startups uh, here in the in in our in the European Union, but also we go further to uh, other international countries such as the United States or um, countries from Asia and, and, and others in Latin America. And uh, our study is based on more than 1,000 startups and uh, 300 solutions that have been already tested in the market as a minimum value um, products, okay? So here below, we can see two graphs. On one hand, we can see the different trends uh, that um, are starting right now this uh, ecosystem. Uh, we can see that the solutions for SMEs and self-employed uh, are in the first place. Uh, the B2B and B2C innovative financial solutions are in second place. Uh, the payment methods, uh, although they are in the third place, um, they uh, have um, decreased a position uh, regarding previous uh, studies. We can see also an increase in cybersecurity in the user experience solutions. But uh, on the right, we can see the most popular solutions are that the most popular solutions are based on artificial intelligence and machine learning, uh, with uh, around 50% of uh, all the solutions that have been studied in this uh, report, followed by blockchain solutions, and then by cybersecurity or IoT, as we can see on the graph. So um, these are like the overall trends taken into account in the fintech and insurtech sectors, but if we put the focus uh, separately on, on these two uh, sectors, we can see that 65% uh, of the startups that we have analyzed come from the fintech sectors and a 35% come from the insurtech startups. And after this study, we saw that in 2021, because the report for 2022 uh, is not ready yet, uh, because we are in the, in, um, we, the, the year has not finished. Um, but the last year, 20% of the solutions that we analyzed were from the health tech solutions. So uh, we can say that the e-health uh, has been the shuttle for the fintech and insurtech potential, including uh, this dimension in the different solutions that were developed. And uh, the fintech verticals uh, were, were the same that we uh, that I have shown you in the previous slide. Um, but for insurtech verticals, we can see that new business models are Pricing, that the customer relationship is uh, being in the center of the solutions. Uh, the health, life, well being uh, is also having a, a more relevant role in the solutions that we are analyzing and that new models uh, have appeared uh, with the connected vehicle that is one of the most popular trends too right now uh, in this uh, in these years and all these verticals that we uh, are showing here are niche opportunities that uh, should be covered and are covered by our virtualized uh, DIH for fintech companies, for SMEs, and for other uh, customers. And according to the different uh, collaborative models that uh, are gathered in these th solutions that we have analyzed, uh, we can see that the business-to-business -business, uh, solutions represent more than 50% uh, of the analyzed mo models. Uh, they are the preferred solutions uh, offered right now, followed by the B2B2C and by the B2C uh, models. But uh, a new uh, model appears, uh, that is the business to government uh, governments model that uh, approaches the open innovation to institutions, to public institutions. And uh, this, uh, this model is, um, is going to, to, to play a relevant role and uh, appears in, in this scenario. 
all those of, of this data uh, are based on the galaxy report, as I said, of insomnia. And right now we are carrying out the, the one for the year 2022. According to the virtual DIH, a virtual DIH is uh, a, an, an, a single entry point uh, that tries to offer in innovation support and to connect the different uh, ideas or different factors of the innovation uh, network uh, in the same at the same place. So uh, Infinitech solution uh, offers to the DIH and innovation uh, management services to companies in both the financial and the insurance sectors uh, and with a special focus uh, on interest uh, or interest on SMEs. And this virtualized digital innovation hub, as I said, is a single entry point for an ubiquitous uh, innovation support approach. That means that uh, with an, a virtualized solution, we can um, answer and advise and to gather different startups and uh, different SMEs and different innovation actors from different uh, geographies and, and different countries, not mm, restricting our uh, action to a single uh, region or territory. So we can see here that our virtualized DIH offers services uh, that are differentiated by categories that makes it easier to the user to find uh, the specific service that uh, they are looking for. Uh, we have also configured different uh, filters in order to offer an agile search. Uh, we have a network in, uh, of collaborators uh, that it's um, really valuable for, for the innovators. We have also these online services uh, that could reach any geography, as I, ha as I have said. Yeah. And the access to this uh, video gate is really easy through the Infinitex uh, marketplace. I will show you uh, now the the how could you how you could uh, access uh, to to it. And uh, we have uh, behind uh, supporting this uh, video data consortium with a valuable uh, experience. Some numbers: uh, our services are in continuous growth uh, as the project is uh, also. Uh, growing. Uh, we have right now more than 175 marketplace uh, registration and uh, around 900 users per month in our marketplace. And we are offering right now more than 40 internal and external uh, technological assets, more than 70 acceleration programs, more than 200 uh, courses in our catalogs. And uh, we are also performing different webinars and, and workshops uh, as this one. Sorry. Well, so according to different services, as I have said, the VDI8 is integrated in the Infinitex marketplace, and uh, the services uh, could be classified in three uh, main um, areas. The first one is the Infinitex, uh, the Infinitex assets. These are the technological assets that we are offering through the marketplace too. And the VDI8 also connects to uh, training and innovation services. In the training services, we can find a catalog of different training courses that could be useful to develop uh, or to acquire different skills related to the fintech uh, technologies and uh, profiles. Also, we offer uh, workshops and webinars and the how-to tutorials to to show or to to show the our users how to. Um, use the different solutions that we are offering through the platform, and then we have the innovation uh, branch of services in which we can find this catalog of accelerators uh, that is uh, i will show you uh, this uh, catalog later but uh, in this uh, catalog we can find different acceleration programs that could be useful in order to uh, develop uh, innovative ideas we have also an innovation support service and uh, different hackathons uh, that are also included in this um, in this branch of, of services and we can see here on the left that uh, we have also a service that is called the Digital Finance Skills Framework and the different learning paths that are attached to these digital finance skills. Uh, with this, we want to uh, classify the different profiles and its specific skills, required skills that are uh, most demanded uh, on the market, just in order to help our users to uh, develop, um, among other uh, things and other services, the uh, learning path to develop, to fully acquire all the skills that are required for this uh, specific profile. 
So first of all, as I have said, we have here uh, the we have the first uh, branch of services. The, they are the training services for excellence. As I have said, we have more than 200 courses that are offered by recognized European training institutions and uh, different programs. We have also training content that is developed by our experts, workshops, webinars, and also practical tutorials for developers, for uh, fintech uh, consultants or fintech um, employees, SMEs, and so. And we can see here we can access, I am going to show you how to access uh, to the platform. Here you can find our website and if you click on the marketplace, you fi could find here the VDI8 uh, service and clicking on the VDI8, you can find first of all the different training uh, resources. We, you can see the catalog of courses that could be uh, searched with these intelligent uh, these smart filters that I have previously mentioned. And uh, the uh, courses are classified in uh, external courses and also the Infinitech uh, courses developed by our experts. We have also uh, our workshops and our webinars uh, hanged on uh, uploaded to the to the website to the VDI8 section, and uh, that will be uh, the training branch of services for Infinitech VDI8. And what is going to be next? Uh, as I've said, you will be able to design your training path according to the most wanted profiles in the fintech and insurtech industries. And it's also to develop the skills that the recruiters are searching right now for uh, and anticipate to the market needs with this uh, learning path design according to different profiles. We have also this uh, open source catalog that is filled with the last trends and the different uh, assets that uh, have been developed under the scope uh, of Infinitech uh, project. We uh, can make a desktop research and we have more than 70 open and publicly available solutions, including solutions in the form of open source code, machine learning, a data science notebook, solutions and documentations and descriptions. And uh, you can access it to all these assets through the uh, marketplace. And then we have the innovation support uh, in order to reach better solutions. We have on one hand, as I've said, the accelerator programs that have more than 70 acceleration, acceleration programs offered by uh, different accelerators and incubators from Europe and other international countries. And then we have also the innovation support services that are based on our consortium experiences and best practices. Following the same path uh, that I've shown you uh, before, here. I'm sorry, I don't know what I've done. <laughs> That's it. Well, we can find here the marketplace, the VDI8, and we can go through the innovation services. And here we can find the accelerator uh, programs. And you will see that you can search uh, these acceleration programs according to a different uh, the different countries that are uh, included in the catalog, and you will find the different accelerated uh, programs that better suit your, your solution too. And then we have the innovation support services. Right now here, you can find uh, on one hand the talent route, I will talk uh, about it later, and on the other hand, the digital finance skills uh, form that I have previously mentioned. And with this, uh, we can gather all the skills that are right now most demanded by, by the industry through a, a form. That uh, could be accessed through the platform, as I have said. So you can see here the different bunch of uh, skills and so. So coming back to the presentation, uh, the next services that are going to be offered through our uh, VDI8 will be an innovation support service form uh, that will gather all the in necessary information in order to uh, give a, a, a proper advice to the different innovators that want to develop an idea under uh, the realm of fintech or insurtech um, sectors. And uh, with this innovation support form, we could offer you the best options in order to uh, develop this idea, not only 
in the area of acceleration, but also in the area of training and uh, technology too, as I will show you right now. And we have also uh, organized different hackathons, as you can see here. We have organized a hackathon with Copenhagen FinTech and the winning team just developed uh, a solution that uh, tried to, com to combat illegal fishery by using algorithms of behavioral patterns and incentive design to predict and assess and manage the uh, ocean trawlers. And uh, we uh, are uh, working on more hackathons uh, to be also uh, offered to you. And then uh, a close look to the innovation support services. Uh, as I have previously uh, mentioned, we have um, the six types of uh, tools and services in our BDI8. Uh, you have seen the open source solutions catalog, the pool of internet finite tech courses with these uh, courses acceleration programs and webinars, workshops, and so. And also that our uh, Mm, platform includes user-friendly tutorials and forms to easily exploit and introduce the assets from, from and to the marketplace. We have also this innovation support service uh, that uh, I, I will show you right now will be a form-based innovation support uh, service that offers not only to, to SMEs and to other fintechs, startups, and, and, and so um, an advice and a provision of information about the different activities uh, for in, of the SMEs in the proper form. We have also a digital finance skills survey and a skills framework service. And this is a, chan a channel uh, that helps us uh, co to collect the information about the skills that are high in demand right now in the market. And um, it gives a high level overview uh, of digital finance and FinTech related skills uh, with emphasis on those skills that are linked to big data, to artificial intelligence uh, in digital finance and so. And uh, then we have the Talent Route. The Talent Route is a virtual network of different fintech uh, and insurtech accelerators in different European countries and non-European countries that uh, was developed by Insomnia. The Digital Finance Skills Framework, uh, just to explain you a little bit more what it is, um, as I've said, is a form uh, that you can fill and complete. And that is a channel uh, that tries to collect information about these skills that are high on demand uh, in demand in the market, uh, as I have uh, previously repeated a couple of times. And um, our network of experts and the Infinite Project analysis and creates these results in the form of uh, different reports that could be useful uh, to identify these profiles and uh, the skills that are attached uh, or related to these profiles. So we can see here that we are going to divide uh, these skills into data management and data engineering, artificial intelligence and machine learning, also decentralized finance, um, digital infrastructure, uh, legal and regulatory aspects, and also the soft skills and da data-driven applications, as you can see here. And um, after that, uh, these uh, like big titles of different profiles will be divided into more specific uh, uh, skills, such as block in here in decentralized finance, we can find blockchain, Bitcoin, uh, smart contracts, decentralized consensus, the blockchain payments, and so. And uh, for example, for, for data management and data engineering, we can find the skills related to data integration, data strategy, data analysis, uh, data visualization, and so. So here you have an example of uh, this uh, division of, uh, on more uh, specific uh, skills. And uh, in, in, in a really near future, we uh, will structure these skills and profiles, and we will relate these skills to this learning paths, as I have previously said. I have shown you the digital finance skills in the platform. Uh, as, as you know, you can access uh, to this form through the VDI8 Innovation uh, Support Services. And then uh, we have also the talent route. Uh, this, uh, the talent route is, as I have said, a network, an international accelerator network that was created in 2017. And uh, all the hubs that take part uh, you know, represent the network are specialized in FinTech and InsurTech, but also in PropTech, legal tech, and other related sectors. And the objective of this network is to give uh, startups from different ecosystems a greater visibility and to offer them these uh, global growth opportunities and to build a strong European uh, network with other startups and other fintechs. This, <clears throat> sorry, this network uh, 
fits the uh, accelerator catalog because uh, all the, the accelerators are taking part in the talent route offer different accelerator, accelerator programs that are really interesting for uh, our users. And uh, Infinitech, um, as, as, I, as I have said, is, is benefiting from this, uh, from this uh, fact. We can see that right now in the network, we have more than 17 innovation hubs that come from 12 different countries. Uh, we are offering at this moment more than 100 innovation programs, and uh, we have uh, accelerated and worked with more than 3,000 startups from different parts of the world and uh, more than 5,000 fintech and insurtech solutions all around the globe. Just to show you um, the, I don't know if I, have, if I have here the link, but you can search for the talent route. And this is our website. And you can know more about the, the, the network uh, just by um, surfing uh, on the web, who we are, and the open calls that we have right now uh, open and so on. And uh, as I have said, we are going to develop uh, this innovation support form, and this is the journey, journey for, the, for the user. Uh, if you're an innovator, you have an idea, and you go to the Infintex marketplace through the VDIH, you will find the innovation support service. As I have said, it's a form, a first form, that gives online advice and to, that points uh, relevant information related to the Infinitec assets, also to the different trainings that could help you with the development of your idea, and also um, the accelerator programs that better suit uh, the technology or the realm in which you are developing your, your idea. So uh, as, a, as a user, you have to fill in this uh, form and to deliver the information. And with some smart uh, filter criteria and using a recommendator, uh, an analysis of the of your of your answer uh, to the innovation support form that includes the title of the project, the realm of the project, the technology that is being used, a brief description, and other uh, key uh, aspects that are needed to know better what are you trying to develop, and um, that could help us to advise you. And um, I have to remark that this uh, form is based on European methodology. You will receive after this analysis a uh, feedback that will lead you uh, to the best, as I have said, learning paths, uh, acceleration programs, uh, or even some uh, assets or technology that could help you in the development of your ideas. And um, if your idea has a great potential, uh, you will receive this feedback and a second form that uh, will be delivered to you. And uh, you will be invited to uh, take part in our community. Uh, as uh, as other uh, many users are taking part right now, and that's all my side. Uh, thank you very much. Um, if you have any question, please don't hesitate to to ask me. Thank you so much for this, Permen. Really, really interesting. Uh, I wanted to ask you. So, this innovation support uh, forum is actually live right now. Um, do you have any data already on? <laughs> you know what is the main focus or how what do startups actually you know what they need help for in specific uh, you know topics do, do you have any any data that you can share with us well uh, right now the the form is uh, under testing yeah we are testing this uh, this form uh, internally and we do not have any any data but we hope in in a near future this uh, will be hang on on the vdih uh, section of the of the marketplace mm -hmm. and we could just uh, give more feedback about uh, about it but uh, i can only say that uh, it will be automatized and using uh, artificial intelligence uh, in the recommendator and uh, with these filters uh, we hope we could deliver the best uh, advice and the best output uh, for the innovators that uh, want to use this uh, this form perfect so for all these innovators and aspiring entrepreneurs out there reach out to us uh, this is gonna be very helpful i was very impressed actually with all the numbers you know the accelerators innovation programs that uh, are being supported by the Infinite project um i have a question here it says uh, what are the criteria for the evaluation of these ideas so for well, this uh, form yeah well of the form 
Well, the idea is to uh, to take into account the technology that is uh, used in the different uh, ideas. For example, if you are developing an idea based on artificial intelligence or big data uh, or whatever, also the, the realm, uh, for example, in, you could have an idea that comes uh, from this fintech uh, sector, but uh, maybe it is a uh, place on open banking or whatever. So uh, we are looking for the realm, we are looking for the, the technology, also your geography in order to um, show you which are the accelerator program, acceleration programs that are close uh, closer to you. And, and also some other data about the budget and the resources that you, uh, that you have uh, to develop the project. Okay, very good. Uh, I guess uh, it's, it's for pretty much uh, different stages. So it doesn't matter if you're just starting now, we can help you through this, even with just, just guides, I guess, uh, all these innovators to where they, go, they can go further later on. But even for established companies, I think it's very useful because we can find different ways of cooperation. Thank you so much once again, Carmen, uh, for this Thank very interesting. Um, I do have another question for uh, Anna, actually. I don't know if, Anna, are you still here with us? Yes, I am. Perfect. Uh, so just a question on uh, the advantages of uh, AI deal uh, against, uh, if you compare it actually to other bank, uh, uh, the bank's individual investment preference services. So yeah, the question is what are the advantages of what you're actually building now compared to what the banks are offering already? So I think the main advantage that um, when we were speaking with the banks that many don't have this offering yet. So they have to provide um, manually the advice from their um, private bankers to the clients that have actually bigger amounts of like bigger, uh, bigger portfolio sizes. So uh, smaller um, clients or with smaller portfolios don't have an access to such offering. And that is one of the biggest advantages. And when we are coming to the um, benefits of an, um, when it comes to already existing solutions, um, our AIGO tool results in a portfolio construction in a very short um, time span. So it's just a couple of seconds and the portfolio is already generated, taken into account all the preferences the user has chosen. So uh, I would say that those are the main uh, benefits from our side. Very interesting. So I can create my profile. You can find like the data and preferences and that uh, will give me in a few seconds. That's super impressive. I'm looking forward to see this in practice. Uh, thank you. Thank you for that. We do have uh, John Soldatos here with us. Uh, he's one of the main project leaders of this uh, of the Infinex project. So hi, John. I saw you raise your hand. Um, Thank you, Theodore. Um, I would like, since you started out, you know, asking the previous speakers, right? So I would like to ask Mr. Petrilis, um, what is his um, idea regarding the future or the future role of incumbent banks? Um, I mean, if uh, we really start seeing, um, you know, like uh, a buy now, pay later, uh, services at scale, and maybe Apple, Amazon uh, doing this and uh, you know, giving credit, uh, doing risk assessment, credit underwritings. Uh, what, do the, what do our uh, traditional systemic banks do in this case? Is there um, um, you know, a new era where uh, they will give fewer uh, banking services? Are they gonna just be providing the accounts or they will have to uh, innovate and catch up and uh, meet the, the flexibility of those uh, uh, new services like uh, BNPL. That's my question. I think it most relates to Mr. Petrilli's uh, presentation, if he's still online, of course. He, he will be back, I shall comment here, he will be back in a minute, uh, but it's a very interesting question. I think this is the, like the billion dollar question. Uh, <laughs> what, are, what is the future? Um, we can ask Anna and Carmen. I think they're both uh, very, very well related to that. So if you want to just give us your opinion, because especially Carmen, you're, you're talking with all these different uh, participants trying to innovate in very different, in many different uh, aspects. So what is your view on this? Yeah, sorry, could you please repeat your question? <laughs> No, I mean, uh, what if uh, open banking is giving, uh, is starting, you know, giving all the services, right, without a bank, right? Mm -hmm. what, the, yeah. what 
what the traditional yeah. banks would do, right? Are they going to just keep our accounts or uh, yeah. uh, they, they, they will have also to, to offer their own services based on data and AI? That was my, my question. I think it was motivated, Carmen, not by your presentation, but mainly from uh, Dimitri's presentation. Yeah. 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 yeah, of course. I agree. I think that uh, Open Banking has now uh, a great uh, path to follow, and that uh, a lot of uh, a lot a lot to offer to to the industry. In fact, and and yeah, I think that it it could be a, 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 a I, I don't know the word in English. Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, to push the change uh, of the traditional uh, bank uh, model. Sorry, I forgot completely the word in English. <laughs> it's fine. We understand. It, it, it makes sense. And this is how yeah, it's already happening. I guess the banks have to keep up uh, to the changes. So, Dimitris, hi. Hi again. Uh, hi. Sorry. I had to, <laughs> to deal with some urgent issue, some production issues. So I was uh, uh, offline for a few minutes. Don't worry at all. So, we just had a question from Mr. Soldatos on, uh, you know, if things are changing so quickly and the open banking is offering all these different services to the world, what is the role of the traditional banks and how can they adjust or what, what do you see is the future for these banks? Okay, sure. So, uh, first of maybe, all... Maybe for Dimitri, just to give a little bit of context. Yeah. Right now, if you give me buy now, pay later, and I can get, uh, you know, credit uh, directly from Amazon or from another company and then tomorrow you give me credit underwriting you give me loans you give me more services without the bank what does what what is the future role of the bank well that, that was my my question uh, dimitris and okay. uh, sorry for coming back later to this but it was still that uh, asked start asking questions you know previous speakers <laughs> Okay, that's a great question and thank you very much for this. So my view has always been that uh, banks in the future, uh, apart from acting like a, a thin layer, let's say, whereby they're offering products for, cons for consumption by third party applications, such as ourselves, they have a big role to play on uh, corporate banking. So I think on the retail and SME sector, uh, in the future, I mean, it's not going to happen overnight, okay, let's not uh, fool ourselves, uh, but in the future, I see banks uh, dominating the corporate market where you have uh, more uh, complex and very structured uh, products that are very specific to each individual uh, business. For example, syndicated lending is a exa good example of, of this. Uh, uh, and uh, I believe that the retail and SME sector will be eventually dominated by the fintechs. However, um, one important point on this is the fact that uh, the trust of uh, businesses and people still lies with the banks. Okay, So all the surveys point to the fact that uh, despite uh, <laughs> all, all, everything that has happened in the banking sector uh, lately, still the banks have a strong brand name and we face this as infinite every day okay i mean uh, people are very wary very scared uh, uh, to, to connect their bank accounts to an application with a name that they that they haven't heard before etc whereby the branding of the banks themselves is extremely strong and remains strong uh, even in cyprus you know where you had the um, haircut of deposits in some of the banks still the people trust the banks more than the fintechs. Okay, so th that's an indication. I mean, it's changing, obviously, right? The Revolut, uh, for example, in Greece here, it has hundreds of, uh, like uh, around 300,000 customers, if I'm not mistaken. So the trend is uh, shifting. Uh, so yeah, to conclude, I think that the traditional banks will have a role to play in the future, mostly on corporate side of things. That's interesting. It, it's uh, it's uh, all about the trust, but I think uh, even even that, like all these new regulations, are trying to tackle this issue. Make sure that you know, even if you want to do something malicious, you don't have the chance. Like as a founder, uh, person who who runs an open banking uh, service. Um, thank you, Dimitris. Uh, John, I I hope this covers you. I guess this is a question that you know doesn't really have an answer. It's a uh, we just need to wait and see what will happen. Um, let me check if we have a few more questions here. I don't see anything. So yes, I can. We can go back to you. Uh, just a 
quick uh, again introduction Dimitri Petrilli from Infinite feel free to reach out to him uh, you can also see the website please share your links here actually with uh, with the people so they can find them uh, we will also share this uh, video and on the description we will share everything with you uh, so you can have a chance to chat directly with all our speakers so I would love to thank you all once again for joining us thank you for the presentation it was very very interesting Thank you, Dimitris, Carmen, Anna, John, uh, and everyone who organized this. Uh, we will be in touch. Good luck with everything. We wish you all the best. And uh, yeah, we will speak very soon. I have this uh, uh, impression. So thanks once again. Have a great summer and uh, have a great day ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank very, you very much. much. Bye, Bye all. Summer.